Hello, last week we announced the first team, which is actually team number two, taking part in the 24 hour challenge, 24 hour drive for Sophie challenge uh, for a native Sophie's legacy. This will be taking place on the 19th of October, 2024. And the first team to be announced was team number two, uh, which was Team Classics World, um, who have, well, they've chosen to use a Mercedes. The team we're announcing today is team number one. So team number one is the first team to sign up for this and the second team to be announced, because why not? Uh, and basically they've sent the video over and we're gonna see what car they're using what their team name is and everything. And I am well prepared because I have headphones because last time it was a bit iffy doing the editing and having to cut out the background noise, if you like, because I was getting dual pickup. So there we go. So welcome to our challenge team and our challenge car. We are team status slow. Status slow. Ah, because status quo, I'm guessing, the band. And they've got a logo and everything. Oh, I don't know if the others have. We do like a bit of guitar driven rock. So that was the inspiration for this. And realistically, this is going to be fairly slow for what we're gonna be doing with it. Okay, so the microphone situation for them appears to be suboptimal. So I shall do my best with the sounds. Please bear with it. Um, I'll try and tweak it. Let's have a little look around this beautiful Skoda Felicia now. We have Lacapur. Lacapur. I think it's got Lacapur. Further Lacapur. Oh! Extensive, we'll say. In fact, this looks, looks like paint that's peeling, so I think it's been repainted at some point. And around the front, the, the bonnet has lacquer peel and patina which is just un unparalleled it really does look like the seagulls have left their mark here it's quite exceptional so this car has lived by the sea the whole of its life <laughs> three blue skips so it is very much been in sea breezes all of its time it hasn't helped the paint in any way great news is that apart from the five or six pieces of rust that look pretty bad it's it's okay um I'm going to let Lottie and Chris talk about the interior in a minute, but the outside is, is okay. Did you just say the outside of this is okay? All the tyres are mismatched and old. They're going to need replacing. That's fine. But fundamentally, it all works. That's the important bit. And mechanically, it drives okay. Top woolarding. Welcome to the Skoda Felicia. Ta-da! <laughs> There it is. What a mess. What a state. I mean, what a state. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's a piece so, of joy. This is a 1998 GLXi, and it's wearing its age, perhaps not so proudly, but it's here. It's in one bit, mostly. Um, give or take a bootstrap or two. And this is our car for the challenge. Let's have a look around. Well, one positive I see with this car straight away is you'd be able to drive this anywhere. Um, nobody's going to steal that. It's surprisingly comfortable. It's got nice firm, firm seating, so going around corners shouldn't be that much of a life-saving or a life-threatening challenge. Do you know I don't actually mind the um, interior in a, in a Felicia? I don't know. I don't mind the dashboard design. It's, uh, it's got a handbrake. It's got a steering wheel. <laughs> it's got a glove box. It's got one, there's sort of two stalks. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got you two know, stalks. No expense got... spared when they built this car. Oh, it's sold. I'll have one. We've got the lights there. We've got yeah. switches here. We've, We've got, got a banging oh. stereo for the tubes. Great. Yeah. I mean, what got no we... cigarette lighter, though, so no sparking up. Yeah. What's in here? <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What? Skoda people, what's that? Yeah, that is supposed to come out, by the way. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Oh. Don't, don't worry, we're not yeah. destroying the car before the challenge is even. Mate. Yeah. Uh, Wind-up windows, we've got half a central lock-in. Did he say half central lock-in? Does it mean like only two of the doors lock? Um, got spacious seating in the boot. Well, A, that's not the boot, and B, that is not um, as spacious as a Mercedes 124, is it? 
Um, one important feature of this car is that um, it only has front speakers. So, should someone be blasting out dire straits in the front, the person in the back wouldn't be afflicted. Thank you very much. If you ask nicely, I want to treat you to some other. Anyway, yes, the back seating in this is exactly the same as the front. It's, dare I say, a very 90s interior, but you know, that's not to the detriment of the car. It could do with a little bit of a clean and a little bit of a tidy, but nonetheless, I think it will be the perfect car for the challenge. I would say I hope she's right, but I have to show impartiality here. Okay, so we're under the bonnet of the Skoda now. We're just going to have a quick look at some of the jobs that need doing. That's one of those old Volkswagen engines, isn't it? It looks like the sort of one you get in a Golf, like a Mark II or Mark III Golf. I'm guessing this is Felicia is VAG era, isn't it? Isn't this the first VAG era developed Skoda? I noticed there's the ECU. So if one of the other teams is feeling frivolous, they could pour something in there. I'm not suggesting they should. I'm just saying that if they did, if they were bad, if they were being baddies, they could, they could pour some Fanta in there or something. I mean, you shouldn't, but you could because it's like right there. And there's no lid on it, but um, it's going to get a full service next weekend. So we've got all the filters. We also need to replace the thermostat because at the moment the thermostat is stuck open. Very common problem on these. Uh, it just means it's not getting up to temperature, so there, therefore it's using a bit more fuel than it should. Ooh, using a bit more fuel than it should. You do not want that. That is an absolute killer. He's just nonchalantly put that to one side. He's going, oh, it's just using a bit more fuel than it should. We'll sort it out. That would be like... <laughs> alarm bells, because it's all about the range. And just on the fuel, it should do around 40 to the gallon. Uh, I'm not sure how it will do with three people in luggage, but um, if, if we can crack 35, I'd be happy. Okay, so that makes that's an interesting point. So he said it should do around 40 to the gallon. Not sure how it will do with three people and luggage. The Mercedes and the Team Classic World have got at the moment. Book figure on that is supposed to be 31. Some people in the chat seem to think 35 was doable. But of course, and that's also a bigger engine. It's a car with potentially better aerodynamics. I don't actually know, but it's a bigger engine, a bit more rolling mass. Having three up in a two litre Mercedes is going to have less effect on the economy, I would think, than being three up in a 1.6 litre Skoda with however many horsepower. How much horsepower has this car got? Hang on. Right, so just punched in the Skoda's registration number into my system and she has 74 horsepower. 74, wow. Apparently it weighs 965 kilos the curb weight that's quite light actually uh registered august 1998 74 horsepower the only downside to that is the fuel tank it's only like 42 liters i think um certainly it only cost me about 45 pounds to fill it the other day from a quarter so that might be one of our limiting factors we'll probably have to stop for fuel fairly regularly but that's probably a safety thing anyway we ought to be stopping every couple of hours regardless Oh, yeah, 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 it's a safety thing. Yeah, yes, sure, yes. So we've got that job to do next weekend. Uh, aside from that, the CV gator on one side is very cracked. So I'm going to swap those. I've got a pair of those. I've got Febby ones. They're only £6.50 each, so they should be fairly simple to change. Uh, and then we're going to have to clean it. I don't know how it will come up. It's really difficult to tell. But... I don't think it's that difficult to tell. I'm on a private road here, so... Chris is about to drive past it. I think somewhere between 90 and 100 miles an hour. Certainly looks it. Uh, yeah, definitely. He's really going there, isn't he? And that's everything I've been sent. There's no, like, closing off video or anything. So uh, they've just left us on a high. Um, that's Team Status Slow, comprised of Matt, who is actually the um, kind of, in a way, the brains behind the idea of doing this challenge. It was kind of his base concepts that I've taken this whole thing from. So um, he is team number one, uh, Matt, Charlotte and Chris. And they are team status slow. How is team status slow going to fare, do you think? Well, we've only got two people so far, or two teams, I should say, so far. Um, let's compare the cars. Okay, so predictably, um, the Skoda is, well, 
it should achieve, according to the whatever publication did it, a combined economy of 41 miles to the gallon, um, which is useful because it only has a 42 litre fuel tank, whereas the Mercedes has a 70 litre fuel tank. This is a problem for team status slow because, try as they might to get it up to 40 to the gallon, their range, their theoretical range, in the Skoda Felicia is only 378 miles. And being that Team Classics Worlds was 478 miles, I'm no mathematician, but that is 100 miles less. So if these cars manage to do, say, Team Classics World manages to do a thousand miles and they eke it out a little bit they're a little bit economical that 31 figure that the team classics world merc should be capable of in theory if they keep moving and keep out of towns and things that should bump up a bit so say they get up to 500 mile range and they both do a thousand miles team classics world will only have to make one pit stop to do that team state is slow will have to make two and being the, the, the biggest thing in this, I said in the last video, range is the killer. It's not technically range is the killer. It's average speed. But average speed is massively influenced by stopping for fuel. And the team with the highest average speed, I personally think, being that this is a timed event, the team with the highest average speed, well, it's not even personal thought. They will win. It's as simple as that. The team with the highest average speed over the 24 hours, average speed this is, accounting for all stops they will win so have, if you have to stop more often for fuel well i mean that's not even slightly comparable that's a hundred mile difference so team state of slow might be the ogs here but i think they might struggle against the mercedes what do you think i mean it'll cost them less to do the thing it, the challenge will cost them less because their car will be more frugal with the fuel it uses but it is going to have to stop more so, um, what do you reckon? I think it could be Team Classics World in front at the moment, but of course this all could change because Team Status Slow might have other things in the back of their mind. They've managed to think of a better name for a start. So, and there will be points for the best name in this, uh, best team name. So, yeah, I don't know. It's down to tactics, isn't it? On the raw data, the raw stats, they're not going to win. But we're not just doing this on raw stats. We're doing this on challenges. It, there'll, be, it, there'll be tactics involved. The only other downside, actually, looking at this team, to say it's slow, have, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Charlotte, they have a lady in the car and Team Classics World do not. And I know from experience that if you are not a lady and you need to stop for the call of nature... Um, if you're not a lady, you can kind of just lay by some bushes and whatnot. Or if you're really desperate to win, Coke bottles and a complete lack of modesty. Um, whereas if you're a lady, mm, you're going to have to stop. I mean, I'm guessing you're going to have to stop unless there's some kind of mad invention that I'm not aware of. So that and, and stopping is going to be the killer on the average speed. So... I'm excited. This is good. Uh, I'm devastated. There's no BXs so far. Absolutely devastated. Um, but we will see. So that's Team Status Slow. They are the second team to be announced. Team number one. We have three more teams to announce. It is a five-team event. Three more teams to announce. Um, they get crazier. <laughs> they get crazier. Uh, this is a sensible one. So... Um, yeah, this should be good. Uh, thank you for watching. Leave me your thoughts below. Share the hell out of this, by the way. Um, we're trying to share this event as far and wide as we can. Make noise about it. Go out there, like arms like agents. Share it. We want to bump this figure up. We're trying to raise 24 grand for this amazing charity. Um, we're up to 200 already on the Just Giving page, which is now live. So the Just Giving page is already open. I'll just put a link in the description below. It's up to 200 quid already, and we haven't even announced the cars yet. So this is good. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, whatever it is you get up to, and that's someone else's line, isn't it? I'm not going to do that one.